<laughs> so seizing trouble. Um, okay, yes. So hi everyone. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about um, a, a county dragonfly atlas project that we're doing here in Monmouthshire. So I'm the county dragonfly recorder for Monmouthshire. Um, um, we uh, I'm going to drive it all from the website because all of the material that I want to show you is on there. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you first of all how to find our Monmouthshire uh, micro site on the website. So it's really easy. You just click on this about here, go into Wales. Um, that will pop a lovely photo of a golden ring dragonfly. If I go across to the right, Monmouthshire dragonfly's micro site, I'll click on that. And everything that I need is accessible from here. So what I'm going to do first of all is just tell you where, talk to you about where Monmouthshire is, um, because I guess not everybody might necessarily know. Um, I have a little map here. It's, um, it's in Wales, as, as um, I said, it's, in, it's the southeastern most, most county in, in Wales. So um, you uh, basically, on this on this map, you'll see here the, the seven estuary. We're just across the estuary from uh, Bristol, Somerset, Gloucestershire. Um, we are this sort of strange kind of I don't know what is that hexagonal shaped county um, with uh, Newport, the largest uh, city. Well, the, the, yeah, the, the city at the centre of, uh, of of the county. Um, we have other populate decent sized population centres such as Cumbran, um, uh, but basically most of the population is concentrated down here in the in the, in the southwest, I guess you'd say. Um, we border onto uh, Glamorgan in the west. So, so just off of this map, we have we have Cardiff. Um, just if, if that helps anybody get their bearings. Um, the uh, the county, uh, you know, as, as per the other counties um, within the uh, British Dragonflies recording scheme, is is uh, uh, the, the definition of it is the, is the sort of traditional uh, what's only advice counties. So um, the in, it includes some areas that perhaps uh, are in other local other local authorities these days. So um, for those of you who um, remember the um, counties from kind of the 70s through to the early 2000s, the other name I guess for for, for this um, for Monmouthshire was was Gwent. Um, there are a small number of differences between the boundary of Gwent as it was then, the boundary of Monmouthshire. I won't bore you with those. Um, but basically, yeah, this is this this is the area. So it it, um, it includes some interesting dragonfly habitats. So on the in the south, along the estuary, we have this area called the Gwent Levels, which is nowhere near as big as the Somerset Levels, which are much um, better known. But it's similar sorts of it's a similar sort of habitat. It's kind of coastal grazing marshes um, crisscrossed by uh, lots of uh, some quite large and some very small ditches. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the species that we have associated with that habitat a little bit later. Um, in the west of the county, we start to get quite quickly into upland areas. So I live here in the middle of Newport, and if I look out of my window, I can see a, a 500 meter high mountain. Um, uh, yeah, there it is, clear clear visibility today, so I can I can see it. And um, basically, yeah, we have these mountains mountains and hills here. And as you head north, um, the start of the Brecon Beacons, Banabrakeniog National Park, um, is round about here um, between Abbotton area and Blenavon. Uh, and there's some fantastic dragonfly um, sites up there, so I'll tell you a bit about those. And then uh, we have some rivers, some interesting rivers going through the county. So we have uh, the Usk going down to the centre. Uh, we have lots of, and that's 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 got slow flowing and fast flowing uh, sections. Over on the east, on the border with Gloucestershire. Uh, Gloucestershire and Herefordshire, we've got the River Wye, and that is a, that is a slow flowing river. And um, from about Tinton downwards, it actually becomes tidal. Um, and then, and then we've got various other sort of smaller, fast flowing rivers, such as the Rumney, which forms our western border, uh, the River Mono, which is a tributary of the River Wye, and lots of other small ones you can see on this map. Um, 
so I've talked about the Grand Levels, I've talked about the uplands, I've talked about the rivers, and oh, sorry, just, just to say the other part of the Brecon Beacons National Park, Benai Brekeniog, is this little area up here in the far north, which is a small part of the Black Mountains. Um, very poorly known for dragonflies. Um, we have lots and lots of records from the other part of the park, but not from here. Um, and then just to finish the picture, we have this huge area, basically, um, you know, you can see between Abergavenny and Monmouth there up in the north, stretching down past Raglan, uh, the town of Usk, um, a huge area of kind of lowland agricultural land, also quite poorly, no, very poorly recorded for, for dragonflies. There are one or two um, sites where we have a good handle on what's there, but most of this area is really poorly known. Um, first quick summary of uh, the, the shape of the county. Um, let me tell you a bit about the recording project. Um, so I took over as County Dragonfly Recorder in 2018, I think it was, and uh, um, first task was obviously to deal with a, a huge backlog of records because we hadn't had a County Dragonfly Recorder here for a good number of years. Got that out of the way, um, and uh, we we had a sort of smooth trickle of relatively, relatively small number of records coming in, and I kind of thought, well, what can we do to, uh, you know, Im improve how well this county is recorded? And the, the the obvious thing to do was to run a county atlas project, which lots of other counties have done. Uh, we we've never actually done that here in Monmouthshire before, um, so. Yeah, I basically decided, right, okay, 2020, we'll launch 10 year Atlas project. Um, and then, you know, with the aim of producing some sort of book or report or something in 2030, giving the results of that. So, yeah, got, got things up and running. We were all ready to sort of start get, getting out there and covering large chunks of the county in 2020, and then COVID hit. So, um, yeah, great, great timing. Um, so, uh, Despite that, people still were able to, you know, once the initial lockdown restrictions lifted, um, get out and record in their local areas. I think it was within five miles or something. Or uh, uh, anyway, um, so uh, and then we've kind of built on that year by year. If I go back to my little menu and then scroll down to the Atlas Project page, you can see you'll be able to see the extent of the recording that we've done so far. Um, so we're four years in. Um, We've done, yeah, we've completed 2020 to 2023. Um, and here's the map of records that we've generated so far. Um, it's plotted at one kilometer square, monad resolution. Um, uh, that seemed like, we, we, we played around with a variety of different resolutions and that seemed like a good one to choose. Um, the county's the right sort of size for that. Um, so, and, you'll see so um the basically the the background map which is the same one that i showed you on the other page with but with all the place names uh removed just to make it a little less um busy um and this is a, so this is a map of all the records that we've generated um or all the records we have in our database so large symbols are records from 2020 or later and then you'll see we've got smaller and different color symbols for records from earlier periods um dating right way back to 1929 which was our very first record which was a record of hairy dragonfly down on the great levels at a site where it's still present so um yeah uh some patterns um on this so you can see i guess that to some extent this is a map of where recorders have been recording rather than necessarily a map of where dragonflies are you've got um strong um you know, concentrations of recording around the population centres uh, and in the areas where there are um, interesting dragonfly habitats. So, you know, obviously the Gwent levels in the south, the moorlands up in the northwest in the Black Mountain, uh, sorry, in the Brecon Beacon National Park uh, and along the River Wye in the east. There are huge chunks of the county with, well, if you look at that section up in the north, hardly any recent records at all for much of that agricultural lowland area. Um, despite the fact that there are, uh, I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of ponds in that area and in lots of smaller streams which would be suitable for uh, some of the riverine species. So um, I'll talk a little bit about what we're trying to do to improve our recording there um, a little bit later. Um, what else can I say? E even 
even in some of these um, areas where, which we know to be good for dragonflies, such as the great levels down in the south, you can see there is still a number of um, groups of one kilometer squares where we have no recent records. Um, and in fact, I've shown you the previous year's map. I put the first set of online maps, sorry, I put the first set of maps from the recording project online here at the end of 2022, showing the first three years worth of data. And at that point, there were still lots and lots of gaps down on the great levels. We had a, a concentrated effort to try and get more recording going on the great levels last year. And so this looks a lot better, but there's still work to do. And in the uplands as well, um, up in the northwest, you can see we've got areas where we have historical records. Um, and of some quite interesting species, um, which just haven't been revisited since 2020. Um, so we've got six years still to go. We've got a lot of um, opportunity here to fill in a lot of the gaps on these maps. I think the other thing I'd say is, uh, um, although some of these some of these areas that are apparently well recorded, look, you know, quite it looks quite impressive. Actually, say in some cases that is just one a record of one species. So um, yeah, lots of these areas with big purple dots um, could do with further visits to get a more um, comprehensive list of species for the square. I've started playing around with frequency mapping and show, uh, um, coincidence mapping, whatever we're calling it, uh, uh, to um, uh, understand which squares have the, uh, the most species in them and uh, which squares are the best for the riverine species, which squares are the best for the uplands, moorland species and so on. Um, I probably will wait another year before putting that map up online because at the moment it, it, it it basically shows just a, a handful of sites with, with with very large species lists. Well, when I say very large, they're ten ten or species. Most most of the smaller, um, you know, most of the remaining squares have, you know, um, two, three, four species. So you know, they clearly need more recording. So that's that's a um, view of where recording has taken place. Um, and so, yeah, just to uh, Wendy, the earlier speaker, was talking a little bit about recorded bias, and yeah, absolutely, you know, we've got, that's that's clearly that's clearly showing on this map. Um, so, I think what I'm going to do is rattle through a selection of the species. So we have 33 species currently on our county list. Um, if you include all of the guest visitors, um, probably only about sort of 25, 26 that actually are here as breeding species. So um, there are maps for each species, um, even if something's only been recorded once. Um, let's pick a nice common one. Most of you, this will be a common species apart from perhaps people in Scotland and the very north of England. Um, Southern Holka. So, Gives you an idea of how, um, first of all, how we've been able to gather records for a common species from a wide um, scattering of sites throughout the county. I mean, clearly from this, you can tell this is a widespread dragonfly species in the county. Um, I think that, you know, as we fill in these gaps up in the north, um, this will be shown to be present right the way throughout, even up to the, uh, the Black Mountains. Um, so that's, I guess that's, that's my first species. Um, and no particular concentrations anywhere, just fairly evenly spread species throughout the county. Um, just to tell you a little bit about these um, map pages then. So, you know, after this, feel free to go and navigate your way around the site and explore uh, these pages. Essentially, we've I've basically described um, what we know and what we don't know about the distribution of each species in the county. Um, so, and then some stuff at the bottom about where else they can be found. Um, and I'm in the process of going through adding some pictures to make this a little less dry. Um, so some of the maps I'll show you will have pictures of the uh, species as well taken in the county. Um, yeah, let me talk to you a little bit about our recording community, I suppose. So I've got um, a mailing list that I send out uh, updates to roughly one, uh, roughly twice a year. Um, I've got about uh, 180 something emails 
on that mailing list now. So we've actually managed to get a large number of people interested in recording Dragonflies in the county. Now, obviously, some of those would be people who've sent me one record at one point in time and asked you to put on the mailing list and, and, and I've never heard from them again. But then there are, we have people who send me, um, you know, hundreds of records every year. So um, it's a real, a real mix. Um, but yeah, uh, we have basically, we do have a, a good uh, scatter of people all across the county um, out there recording Dragonflies. So um, it's, it's generated a lot of enthusiasm, this project, and people are, people are using these maps to um, get out there and identify areas that haven't got records or haven't got recent records and going out and seeing what they can find in those, those spots. And they've turned up some really interesting stuff as well, So, which I'll, I'll talk about as we show you some more of the maps. Um, so that was Southern Hawker, a really common species. I'm going to show you one more common species, which is blue-tailed damselfly. Um, and again, widely distributed throughout the county. Um, what this map I thought showed quite interestingly is just how um, good a dragonfly area the uh, great levels are, because, you know, whereas with Southern Hawker, um, you know, it was evenly scattered throughout the county. There are some species which, as soon as they find those ditches down on the down on the great levels, they are, you know, they, they something like blue-tailed damselfly, which is kind of common and common and um, doesn't, sorry, which doesn't need, have particularly demanding habitat requirements. Um, it can be found in, I wouldn't say even the even the least interesting ditches, because there are some ditches. Although the great levels is a fantastic habitat with um, large areas of real, you know, uh, which are really rich in dragonflies, there are still areas which are intensively farmed and. Um, the cows graze right the way down to the waterline of these ditches and you see no vegetation and then you've got agricultural runoff and yeah you can walk across some parts of levels and take a you know a walk for a kilometer and see no species of dragonfly at all but there are some fantastic areas which i'll show you uh, some maps um for that illustrate those in a moment um uh so yeah and I guess the other thing it shows, as I was talking earlier, was just how there are still areas on the levels with only, um, you know, older records and been visited for recent, uh, recently for recording. Um, okay, that, that's two common species. Let's go for, come back to the great levels in a moment. Let's go for some of our river welling species. And the obvious one to pick is common club tail. So it's been known on the Y for, a very long time. Our first record in Monmouthshire on the Y was in 1975, but I, I would it wouldn't surprise me if records predate that from uh, other counties along the Y. The, the population um, extends north from Monmouthshire uh, into Gloucestershire, Herefordshire, and, and and beyond. And yeah, club tail is found widely um, throughout those counties as well. Uh, it's the best way of seeing it, I think, is to get down there in uh, late May when they're emerging. Um, and the, if, if anyone wants, <laughs> as much as much as there can be a guaranteed site for these things, the area perhaps a, uh, a, a kilometre or so north from Monmouth Bridge, um, an area called Dixton, where there's a church, um, that, that seems to be the area where they're most reliably seen, whether that's just because it's a you know, it's a well-known site, and so people go back there every year and find them, or um, or whether there are larger numbers there than elsewhere, I'm not sure. Um, but clearly, it you know, it's it's found uh, along the wire, back to about Tintern. Um, I saw one last year somewhere around here, which I think is Big Swear. Um, I think probably as we get more and more recording done, we'll find that it's present. All the way along, certainly this upper stretch of the Y, above the high, um, the, the tidal limit at, at the Big Swear. Um, it's found along the, the Mono as well, which is a smaller river um, with faster flowing stretches as well as slower flowing stretches. Um, this was this dot here in the north is at Skenfrith Castle. Um, uh, so that's probably like, what about 10 kilometres upstream from from Monmouth. Um, I found that last year just on a short, uh, I was out riding my motorbike and just, just fancied a, fancied a short refreshment break and happened to choose the 
the, uh, the bridge by the mono and looked down and there were there were two male clubtails doing their um, territorial defence thing on the on the uh, on the river. So um, I suspect it's present certainly on slow flowing stretches from Skimpris all the way down to Monmouth, possibly further up river as well. Um, so some opportunities to do some more recording and find out how how uh, um, extensive the population is on the mono. This record over in the west is another interesting one because it's been suspected, well suspected is perhaps too strong a word, it's been hoped that we might find a population on the USK um, for many years. I mean, people have talked about it. Um, we have one of our nature reserves wardens, Kevin Dupay, who's threatened to kind of take his kayak and throw it in the river at Abergavenny, hop in it and just um, float down until he reaches Newport in the hope that at some point he might stumble across a, a club tail. He's never actually, never actually done that yet. It's, uh, however, however, um, we, the one was seen last year in a garden in this little village here, which is called Gavailon, which is close to the river, um, certainly within a, within a kilometre or so. We have a canal. Um, uh, it's a sort of active canal um, uh, the, in the northern part of the county. Um, it's uh, and and obviously with lots of boats going around, it's not not great for dragonflies because there's lots of disturbance um, elsewhere elsewhere further to the south. We have good numbers of dragonflies where 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 it's more um, undisturbed and they haven't kind of restored it yet. So um, yeah, so if if Alan Alan Underwood was able to find one in his garden at Gavine on up here, which is, a, you know, a considerable distance from the populations on the Y. The suspicion that somewhere on the Usk there's a population as well. So that's that's a target for this year. For anybody who wants to um, make their name, um, uh, let's see whether we can find them on the Usk. Um, so that's that's uh, Cubtail, which is our most restricted um, rivering species. Obviously, we have other things like the demoiselles. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um, and the demoiselle, for example, I won't spend too much time on this, but you know, you can see it's much more widespread. And if I was to show you the map of beautiful demoiselle, you'd see you'd see it's much more widespread still because it's found on, um, as you know, the faster flowing waters. Uh, okay, let's show you golden ring. Just to show you one more river species, golden ring dragonfly. Here we go. And with this one, much more of a concentration over in the west, um, where we have rivers, streams coming off of the, the moorlands, which is kind of what you'd expect. But also, um, you know, records from the east as well. So, uh, and, and strangely from the coast. So I guess, you know, it's a fast flying, powerful dragonfly, isn't it? I guess they disperse in warm weather and turn up at well watched coastal sites. Um, a lot of our records come from bird watchers. Which is probably a common theme across uh, many of the counties. Um, and down here on the coast, obviously, that, that spot there is Goldcliff Pools, which is a well known bird migration hotspot, great for waders and breeding avocets. Well, <laughs> avocets that attempt to breed um, and never um, manage to succeed. But uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, a, a, so that's a, that's a site that's turned up. Gold Ring Dragonfly and all sorts of other things. Um, two records of Southern Migrant Walker, um, for example. Um, and even in Newport, you know, they've turned up in the Golden Ring has turned up in back gardens in Newport. So I think you, I don't just get records from dragonfly enthusiasts. I get records from people who've seen an unusual thing in their garden, trying to find out who to tell, and somehow they make their way to me. Sometimes directly, sometimes through quite circuitous routes. But uh, yeah, um, okay, so. But continuing with the theme of species that are uh, confined to those moorland upland areas of the county, common hawker, let's go with that. Um, so, a very clear um, distribution where it's confined to the uh, upland moorland habitats. Um, we have one site over in the east which is of similar habitat. Um, where there are records from, I think it was 2016. Yeah, so that's on the list to go back and revisit to see whether they're still there and if it's just an isolated site or whether there are more sites nearby. Um, the only records that we have from 
anywhere else. Um, one down here at the Gwent Levels, that's the most nature reserve, um, which uh, was from 2012 um, and was supported by Photograph. Um, so absolutely no doubt about that one. Um, I regularly receive, and I'm sure some of you who are County Dragonfly recorders are probably in this same position, records of common hawker from all sorts of unlikely sites. Um, I wish <laughs> I wish we'd change its name. Um, and there invariably, you know, you if you if you contact the recorders, they either um assume that because um yeah, because common hawker is called common hawker it is the common hawker and, uh, and actually no that's not the case um if you start asking them about the appearance of the dragonfly they just they describe a you know classic um mature male um migrant hawker and migrant hawker is the species that's very very abundant down here on the on the levels um so yeah most of those common records common hawker records go in vin um uh but uh it's not it's not unknown for it to uh, outside of more than habitat, but yeah. Um, so, give you a little bit of insight there into some of the some of the difficulties we have with kind of um, deciding what is an acceptable record. Um, and yeah, if any, uh, I know some of the, I recognise some of the names. Um, some of you are also county dragonfly recorders, and I'm sure will have had exactly the same um, difficulty. Uh, I've got. Four more species, so I'll rattle through them quite quickly. Um, brown hawker, which in most counties across England is a very common species. Here it's strange, it's it, it's not. It, um, it was only found for the first time in 1995, a single site up here in the northwest. Um, quite why and how it has colonized from that route rather than, you know, moving across from Somerset, Gloucestershire, where it's a where it's present, or from Herefordshire, I, I, you'd expect perhaps that some of the first sites would be over here in the east at Fishing Lakes or something, but no, it's not it's colonised via the northwest via some uh, um, small acidic pools up, up on the moors, um, probably close to the highest point that we've got in the county. Um, just one site for a number of years, then it spreads to some others, and it's I think it's gradually gradually expanding out, um, being found at new sites. So uh there's that one what else what else can i show you um i said i'd go back to talking about the gwent levels so two two species that are associated with the gwent levels which i'll just tell you about briefly hairy dragonfly and you can see if any if, if there was one species which demonstrated um a a, a strong um, correlation with presence of levels habitat it's this one so um i did quite a bit of sort of concentrated targeted recording for this last year trying to find it in as many one case squares as possible in the west um kevin dupay who i mentioned earlier the um, warden at the grant levels reserve did the same over here on the east and a couple of other people as well um so we've got uh quite a good um Kind of quite quite a representative map of where it's found, um, but more work to do. Um, and interestingly, it's been we've got a couple of records on the north side of Newport here. Um, quite what's going on there, I don't know. It may be that there's a um, small population in a, in in some low lying marshy grasslands uh, with wet ditches there. Something else to try and figure out next year, as this this year even. Oh, and then randomly a record up here on a golf course in the north of the county. Um, so um, that's hairy dragonfly. I'm going to go quickly to variable damage. Like all the species on this list, when I put these first the first set of maps out, this was the what the one species that we well one of two species which um, we weren't sure was still present in the county. There were records um, from 2011, um, but nothing more recently. Last year, while doing um, some of those hairy dragonfly uh, um, surveys that I was talking about, I found a particular uh, reen, R-E-E-N, that's the Welsh word for, um, or the word we use here for the ditches. Um, I, I think over in Somerset, they, they, they call them reens, but spell it slightly differently. Um, uh, so yeah, basically a ditch with loads and loads of azure damselflies. My 
variable damage apply antennae went 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 into um, action, and I started checking every one. And actually, it was really easy, really easy to find them because they 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 stood out by being a sort of brighter, darker uh, blue. Um, and um, other recorders went back um, later, uh, a couple of days later, and found more. Um, I, I, I think I found about three. Um, a guy called Lee Gregory, who's very very enthusiastic um, uh, and um, a good photographer, went back and found about twelve of them. So this this looks like it's a a good site for variable damage supply. And then um, Chris Harris, I'm not sure if Chris is on the call, but he's um, the recorder for uh, Herefordshire and works um, down here as, um, on a conservation project on the Brent Levels, found just one um, over on the eastern side of the levels. More and more records are coming to light. Um, we had one coming through the iNaturalist website. We had one uh, coming through some ecological surveys in relation to a, I think it was a solar farm or a wind farm, a solar farm, I think. Um, so it looks like we do still have a population of variable damage supply here down on the levels, which is great. Um, one last species, more red-eyed damselfly. Our first records uh, were 2015 um, from an ecological survey in the Newport Docks area and from 2017 at Uskmouth. Um, and it's just spread you know, yeah, most of any, anyone else who's in a county which has this species will, will be familiar with the pattern. It's found at one site, and then within a couple of years, it starts to spread, and then a few more years, and eventually you find it throughout the county. And, you know, it's it's now one, two, three, four, five sites up in, in the north of the county. I have absolutely no doubt that we'll find more sites again this year, and it's now, now more common than, you know, um, than, than red light. So, um, yeah, that's the last species I was going to show you a map for. Um, there are other species that are starting, that appear to be starting to starting that colonisation process as well. We have lesser emperor, which is found, which we found breeding last year for the first time, or showing breeding behaviour, I should say. Um, and we've had sub four southern migrant hawkers now. Um, and there are some surprising emissions from the county list as well. So we haven't had guest chaser yet, despite the fact that um, you know they're present over here on the Somerset and. Uh, South Gloucestershire levels, um, going to be, Quid seems to be one of the next um, species to colonise. And Willow Emerald, in fact, has been seen at Seven Beach, which, you know, if I stand on the coast of the estuary here somewhere near Chepstow and look across, I can I can see the site where it was recorded. So um, I think it's going to be quite an interesting time in the next few years. We should uh, stand a good chance of adding further species to the county list. Um, I'm probably going to stop there um, and already overrun my slot. Um, we need to leave time for Q&A. So, yeah, that's a little rattle through of um, a representative selection of species that um, we've, we've got in the county. Um, and, um, yeah, OK, I'll hand back to you, Ellie.